Democratic mayors are asking the White House for $5 billion to address the influx of migrants in their cities. Brandon Johnson of Chicago and Mike Johnston of Denver traveled to Washington, D.C. to personally appeal to the Biden administration and Congress. They, along with leaders from New York, Houston, and Los Angeles, also want the president to increase work authorization for migrants entering the country. So that means we're going to turn to CBS News immigration reporter Camila Montoya Galvez, who joins us from Houston. Camila, thanks for being with us. What do we know about Johnston and Johnson's meeting at the White House? Good evening, John. This meeting really underscores the political challenges that President Biden is facing on this issue of immigration due to the record levels of unlawful crossings along the U.S.-Mexico border over the past two years. The mayors of the largest cities here in the U.S., all of them Democrats, continue to say that the federal government is not doing enough to help them accommodate the tens of thousands of migrants, John, who have been arriving to their cities either because they are being bused by the Texas state operation that Governor Abbott has authorized or because they are getting there on their own because they know some of these cities like New York and Chicago are converting police stations and hotels into makeshift shelters. And so this is a dire logistical and humanitarian problem that all of these cities are facing, and it is creating this very dire political pro problem for the president as he seeks re-election. And the Biden administration, John, would argue that it has already taken several steps to deal with this issue, including by granting hundreds of thousands of Venezuelans the opportunity to work here legally so they don't have to rely on local services, and by expediting work permit applications. But these mayors want more actions. They want more federal money to shelter migrants, and they also want a strategy, John, and we've talked about this before, for the federal government to take charge of the transportation of migrants so they go to other places beyond these large urban cities. So quickly, uh, uh, Camilo, on, on the, what they want and what the White House is possibly going to be able to give them, are they just stuck? Or is there, is there the view that they might be able to find some kind of an agreement where they may not, well, the mayors may not get everything they want, but they get at least something? Well, the main issue right now, John, is that the Biden administration cannot do a lot right now to expedite the work permit application process. One, because Congress has created restrictions on when asylum seekers can apply for a work permit, but also because U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, that agency that oversees applications for immigration benefits, including work permits, is severely backlogged and understaffed and does not have the resources right now, John, or the staffing to be able to adjudicate hundreds of thousands of applications, rather, in a timely fashion. And the other part of this problem is that the number of people arriving to the border and then to these cities continues to be at historically high levels. In fiscal year 2023, which just ended a couple of weeks ago, Border Patrol recorded over 2 million migrant apprehensions, John. That is only the second time in U.S. history that that has happened. You're in Houston because former President Trump spoke at a rally about immigration. What did you, what did you make of his remarks and uh, the policies uh, that he mentioned? Well, John, President Donald Trump, former President Donald Trump, that is, spoke about many issues, including economic issues, reviving the oil and gas industries. But he also touched on the issue of immigration, which he has really relied on to galvanize many of his voters. He is proposing some major changes to the system, including mass deportations, denying citizenship to the children of undocumented immigrants, and even implementing screenings that would deny the entry of legal immigrants who have certain political beliefs, such as Marxists and communists, as the president calls them. And so this is one of the issues that he's hoping to use, John, to galvanize voters to potentially win back the White House in 2024. But it remains to be seen whether he can actually follow through on them if he is elected, because there is a lot of legal uncertainty and also operational challenges that these proposals would obviously face. Yes, yeah, since you cover the policy and know what can actually be done and what can't be done because of Congress's role and the backlogs and the rest, um, how possible are the proposals that he talked about today? 
Well, let's start with the proposal, John, to deny birthright citizenship to the children of unauthorized immigrants through an executive order. Most legal scholars will tell you that the U.S. Constitution is simply very clear on this issue. If you're born here on American soil, you are a U.S. citizen, irrespective of whether or not your parents are here legally. So that proposal would certainly face lawsuits. And then this vow and pledge to carry out mass deportations, the largest deportation operation in U.S. history, as the former president would say, would also run into practical problems. ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, the agency that deals with deportations, only has 8,000 deportation agents. And the highest annual tally of deportations that that agency has ever conducted was about 400,000 in 2012 during the Obama administration. And there were also humanitarian implications that we have to consider, John, because many of these unauthorized immigrants have U.S. citizen family members like spouses and children, and the government does not have the legal authority to deport U.S. citizens. So that raises a specter of potentially family separations or just a hindrance for the government to deport unauthorized immigrants who have U.S. citizen family members. So there are a lot of legal operational and humanitarian complexities here at play, John. Which we are grateful for you explaining so clearly. Camila Montoya-Galvez in Houston, thank you.